This is Bill Cunningham on the street this week. There's no reason to be doom and gloom and think that fashion is finished. The best fashion show is definitely on the street. Always has been and always will. For the past 29 years, one man has dedicated his life to watching movies with the single goal of separating the rad from the really bad. That man is Richard Krauss. Oh, hey, you're here. Welcome to This Week on Movies. This week, it's all monkeys all the time. I've got some unusual simian superstars to tell you about, but first off, we'll kick things off with a look at Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Wrong with you? Oh, monkey! <laughs> Thinking far off me, you damn 38! No! Rise of the Planet of the Apes is a big budget prequel to the beloved science fiction movies of the 60s and 70s. In it, Andy Serkis plays Caesar, a chimp who grows up to become kind of a chimp Guevara figure after being raised by humans, played by Frida Pinto okay. and James Franco. Where the original movies were kind of allegories for racism and nuclear war, this one is more of a generic action movie with a whole lot of computer generated imagery. Now having said that though, I did really love the end part of the movie where Caesar gallops across the Golden Gate Bridge on horseback, arm raised in triumph. That is one of the best bits of monkey business in any of the Planet of the Apes movies. I thought, wouldn't it be exciting to communicate with a chimp and find out what it was thinking? So why not teach him sign language? And that's essentially why I started Project Nim. The 1970s, the same decade that gave us the bulk of the Planet of the Apes movies, also gave us a linguistics experiment that saw a young chimp taken from its mother and raised as human. He liked alcohol. You'd give him a sip and he'd want more. We gave him puffs on a joint. Academy Award winning documentarian James Marsh, the same man who made Man on Wire, has reassembled all the key players in Nim Chimsky's life, and they turn out to be more or less the villains of the piece, no matter how well-meaning they might have been. It raises really interesting questions about the ethical treatment of animals and whether or not this could only have happened in the 1970s. Knowledge of knowledge! What was the first movie to show a toilet flushing? Psycho, Alfred Hitchcock, 1960. Which is the only James Bond movie to feature a Bond girl who used to be a man? For your eyes only, Caroline Cozy, who was actually born a man. Hey, how do you know that? I'm simply trying to gather information to help the people in the present trace the path of the virus. In keeping with our monkey theme, we have a movie from the vault that you might want to check out. In this one, Brad Pitt plays an animal rights activist whose father's laboratory might be harboring a deadly disease. But 12 Monkeys is also a time travel story about a man who goes back in time to try and avert the crisis. No one other than Terry Gilliam would take Brad Pitt and Bruce Willis and put them in an action movie and still managed to turn it into something surreal, something skewed, something unlike we've ever seen before. It's brilliant, it's confounding, it's funny, and it's a little bit sad too. 12 Monkeys is definitely worth a look. Hello and welcome to Celebrity Picks. I'm here with Andy Animal, lead singer of the Brooklyn-based band The Stalkers. And he's going to tell us about one of his favorite movies. Every Which Way But Loose. Starring Clint Eastwood. Well, you should go see, people should see this movie because it's Clint Eastwood and a beer drinking orangutan and professional street fighting and trucking and bar brawls and they get to make anybody wish they had a pet orangutan that was there for them all the time. <sighs> Go out there, see Every Which Way But Loose, and then see the sequel Any Which Way You Can. 
Go ape. All right, thanks. I'll see you guys next time. <sighs>